Hi everyone, it's Rachel and in this video I'll be showing you how I package and send the orders that I make on my online store. So if you didn't know already, I have an online store on Store Envy called Creative Rachie and there I sell some of my handmade polymer clay creations. I always get a lot of questions on Instagram and YouTube about how I go about packaging the charms and then how they get sent in the post. So all of this is going to be explained in this video. Please keep in mind that all of the information I'm giving you is just from my own personal experience and then how I like to do it, but there's no right or wrong way to the method of sending orders. So starting off, if you want to sell charms online and send them all around the world, you're going to be needing some packaging materials. To firstly protect and package my charms, I use good old bubble wrap. You can buy rolls of bubble wrap at your local post office or it's also a great way to reuse the bubble wrap that you receive in other packages. So in my spare time, usually I like to pre-cut small squares of the bubble wrap so that they're all ready to go when I start making orders and I just find this to be a lot more time efficient rather than cutting off sections while I try to package because it seems to make my life uh, so much easier for me anyway. You'll also be needing some tape for your packages and there's lots of different types to choose from. You can use regular sticky tape, uh, packaging tape or washi tape which also looks really cute and you can even get uh, lots of different colours and patterns that match your theme of your shop. Other things that you may need could include resealable baggies, cellophane bags, little boxes or tins and then of course some mailers to send them in. So there are so many different varieties of mailers that you can buy. You can get them in different sizes, strengths, thicknesses, uh, the material that they're made from. So like cardboard, plastic or paper for example. These here are the particular ones that I use. These ones are bubble mailers. So they have like a paper kind of outside and then a layer of bubble wrap on the inside for extra protection. I've found these particular ones to be a good size for the items I plan on sending. And I buy these in bulk from Australia Post because as you can see, these ones are branded. I used to buy them singly but then I began buying them in a box of 100 because then when you buy in bulk you generally get a discount so it ended up saving me $60 per 100 mailers um, when I buy them in bulk. Bubble mailers can also be easily found online in bulk from websites such as Amazon which too offer discounted prices for the more that you buy. When I package my charms, I do them all separately so they're nice and protected and hopefully won't break in the mail. As far as I know, none of my charms have been damaged um, as in broken wall in the mail so this method uh, seems to work. What I do is take a square of the bubble wrap for each charm, the ones that um, I pre-cut before, and then I wrap it around and tape it up with this like paper washi tape kind of stuff because um, this is so much easier to get undone later rather than trying to fiddle around and peel off regular stick tape which gets quite stuck to the bubble wrap. I then just trim off any excess around the charm if needed using a pair of scissors. Some crafters also like to use boxes like this one to send their charms so that is also another option that you consider if you want to uh, do it a bit differently. I then take a resealable baggie which I purchase in like a bag of 80 or something uh, from a local dollar store and they're fairly easy to find and then I place in one of my business cards. If you were wondering, I got these business cards from Vista Print and I designed everything myself on Photoshop but they do also have templates available for you or you can commission an artist on like Instagram or something. Um, to design and create the layout for you if you'd like, if you'd rather not do it yourself. So once I've put one of my business cards into my resealable baggie, um, I then take the wrapped up charms that the particular customer ordered and do a quick little double check before also placing them inside on top of the business card and then sealing up the bag. When I package all of my charms after a shop restock and I have a bunch of orders to send, I actually find it easier if I get kind of a little production line going rather than packing one order at a time. Then of 
course, on the envelope, you need to write the customer's shipping details, sign the package if you need to, just to declare that you're not sending anything illegal that you shouldn't be, and then also put your own details on the back of the package in case it gets lost or the address it's going to is invalid, and then it can be sent back to you. So when you own an online store, most likely you're going to have to ship your items internationally, of course, uh, unless you don't want to offer that. It's really important that when setting up a shop and working out all the prices and the small little details, that you take into account the cost of shipping along with the price of all your materials. A great way to work out how much packages will cost to send is to use a postage calculator. Most postal services have these on their website, like for example I use the Australia Post Calculator and I also know that the US Postal Service have one too. All you have to do is just Google your particular service plus postage calculator to find out. So to work it out, all you have to do is put in your location, the destination of where the package will be going, and then the size of the package. And obviously the larger and heavier the package, the more it will cost to send. You can also select and compare the different types of services like first class ones and ones with tracking etc. I personally tend to use just regular airmail because that's all I'm currently offering on my store. A lot of people actually try to avoid offering international shipping because it can cost uh, so much and even though the customer will be paying for it, they still think it's not quite fair. I'm actually able to send all of my international packages for only a few dollars more than my local ones because I've found that if the width of the package is less than 2 centimeters, then Australia Post classes it as a large letter rather than a small package which would make the price increase from like $3 straight up to $15 or something crazy like that. That. I'm not quite sure if this is the same in other countries so you could always ask or use the postage calculator to find out. So to make sure my packages are thin enough I've made up like this mock slit and I know that if the envelope fits through it will be classed as a letter. For my larger charms I sometimes have to pop a few bubbles in the mailer to make sure it fits through if it doesn't on its first go um, but all the charms are still safe because they're all individually wrapped anyway. Once all of the orders are packed, it's time to head to the post office and get them sent off. Now I and a lot of other people have found that generally the people working at the post office don't like it when you take too many things uh, in at once to send and can stereotypically be quite snappy at times. I've also found that a great way to avoid the actual post office is by going to an outlet uh, at a local milk bar who can also do the same stuff as the post office. So in the post office or the outlet, whichever you choose to go to, they will uh, weigh, check the size and then all the other things to calculate how much everything will cost. You may also be required to fill out and sign a customs form if you are sending international orders. So you just have to fill in your details, what the package contains and how much it roughly contains in value. And then this sticker is then stuck on the front of the package. Some places also ask that you stick on your own airmail stance before coming in because it saves them time. So if you want, you can ask for a handful of these at the post office counter along with a handful of the customs forms. This seems to vary between different places, so you might have to stick them on yourself, otherwise the post office workers will do it for you. If you want, you can also ask them to put a tracking number on your packages that you want to have tracking and then on the final receipt that they print after you pay, it should have the numbers and a website on it where you can track the progress and also let your customers know so that they can do it too. The post office workers will then take care of the packages from there and send them off to be sorted and shipped as soon as possible. When I get home or I have internet, I then log on to my store's dashboard and mark all the orders that I just sent as shipped. So this means that the customer receives an email and it lets them know that their charms are on the way. And there you go, that is everything involved when I have to send orders that I make on my online store. I hope that you found this information helpful and learnt something from the video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, give this video a big thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Bye guys!